Now that we know a little bit about critical path, I'm going to explain a concept that's a little bit confusing. Uh, but first of all, a little different background behind me in this video. Uh, I'm recording this in downtown Portland, where most of my videos I record in downtown Cincinnati. So a little different perspective on this one. So free float and total float. I will tell you this is a bit of a confusing concept, and I'll, I'll tell a personal story about this. When I took uh, this course in project management back in 2000, 2001, uh, I remember memorizing how to compute total float and free float. And then I remember taking the exam. And back then, that's when exams were paper and closed book. And I remember it got to the uh, total float and free f float question, and I completely forgot everything. Did not get the question right. Uh, I'll also say in this class, when I put this question on a quiz, it is very frequently missed. Uh, even when I go over the answer and then give a the quiz again, it's still missed. It's a tricky concept. Let's see if we can try to demystify it a little bit. So we, by learning critical path, we know what float is. We know critical path is the path that typically has zero float in a project plan. And then the other parallel paths that do have time or do have capacity, what well, we call that float. And if we add up the float across an entire lane, we'll call that total float. Free floats where things get a little bit confusing because we have to have a specific scenario. And that is we have to have two tasks or at least two or more parallel lanes that converge at one point. Uh, they don't need to be critical path by themselves, but typically one of the two paths will take longer than the other. So the question is, the path that takes the shortest amount of time how long can that be delayed until it impacts the early start date of the subsequent task? That's free float. Uh, easiest to look at this through an example. So uh, take a look at this, uh, this project that we have here. And first thing we want to do is com uh, compute the critical path. Okay, so we know F is going to be on the critical path because there's nothing parallel to it. And that's our end activity. Uh, as we look to the left, the, sub, the, uh, the preceding activities on F, we need to add up the longest one. And the longest one is the DF lane, because uh, notice that's a total of 15 days, where ABF is 11 days, uh, CBF is 13 days. So critical path is that DF path. Okay, now, uh, what are the early start dates of A, B, and C? Well, A and C are straightforward. Uh, we could start either of those on day one. Uh, task C is a little more tricky because we see, okay, uh, or sorry, task B is a little more tricky because we see, okay, uh, task B can't start until task C is finished. Now, remember, we consider uh, working days to be full days, and we consider the first day to be the morning of the first day and then work that entire day. So a task that takes three days is going to be day one, day two, all the way to the end of day three. And then the next task can start at the beginning of day four. So given that uh, early start date for A and C are both one, early start date for B is going to be four, okay? Uh, now, late start date, okay. Well, it's, we kind of have to reverse engineer this one. So uh, if critical path here is 15 days, nine plus six, and task F is six days, okay, task F could start on day 10, then all of day 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 is six days. So start at the beginning of day 10, that means B must finish at the end of day nine at the absolute latest. And then B, if it finishes at day nine, nine, eight, seven, six, if it takes four full days, the late start date of B is day, is day six. So six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, four F, and there we go. Okay. Uh, okay, if the late start day for B is six, and we know A takes only one day, then the late start day for A is five, because that would be one day for A. Then six, seven, eight, nine would be four days for B. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 would be six days for F. So late start date of B is six, late start date of A is five. Okay, now let's take a look at task C. Well, if the late start date for B is six and C takes three days, then uh, five for three, the late start date of C is three. So, okay, now we have late and early start dates. Okay, 
Um, and that hopefully we remember from critical path. Now, what's the total float of lane A, B, F? Well, let's see. A and B is a total of five days, and it's running parallel with D, which is nine days. So nine minus five is four days. Okay, what's the free float of task A? And this is where things get kind of interesting. So remember, free float means how long can this be delayed before it impacts the early start date of the subsequent activity. Uh, so let's consider that. Well, first of all, let's think about what's the free float of C? Free float of C is effectively none, zero, uh, because if that gets delayed at all, that means the task B cannot start on day four. Okay, But what about A? That was the actual question. What's the free float of task A? Well, A is only one day, and it's running parallel with C, which is three days. So if A is delayed by one day, starts on day two, ends on day two, does that affect the early start date of B? No, because A is already done by day two. If A starts on day three and is complete on day three, because it's a one day task, does that affect the early start date of B? And the answer is no, because once again, start on day three, end on day three, B is able to start on day four, okay? Well, we know that A could start as late as day five. Uh, so let's consider the scenario that it starts on day four. Starts on day four, ends on day four. Does that impact the early start date of B? And the answer is yes, it does, because A has to be complete before B starts. If A starts on day four, B cannot start on day four. B has to start on day five or day six. So there's still float. It's just impacting that early start date. Similar question, if we start A on day five, okay, we could still make our project on time. Just a matter that A is going to be beginning of day five to end of day five. B can't start till day six, okay? So you see, if A is delayed one day, if A is delayed two days, B can still start on its early start date. If A is delayed three or four days, uh, B cannot start on its early start date. So what is the free float of task A? It's two days. And for that, we can kind of almost look at like a mini critical path of just this subset here. And we can say, okay, C to B would be critical path if we're ignoring D to F. And then free float is effectively uh, what's the float on this parallel path, which is two days. Uh, so now if we look at the grander picture, we see, okay, we actually have a couple more days of float over here, but we're going to lose that float if A gets started uh, after the proposed early start date for B. Okay, uh, what's the free float for task C? We already answered that one. That's kind of mini critical path. C cannot be delayed at all uh, without impacting the early start date of B. It can be delayed, don't get me wrong, but if it is delayed, it would impact the early start date of B. And that is uh, essentially free float. Okay, so if we have float, do we want to start the task at the early start date or late start date? You know, there's, uh, there's considerations either way here. There's definitely advantage to getting work out of the way. Uh, because then we get to find out uncertainties earlier or any risk earlier. And that gives us as project managers an opportunity to mitigate that risk and come up with a mitigation plan when we might have more resources available to us. But on the other hand, let's be realistic. A lot of software projects do get canceled. And um, we, you know, we, we don't want to leave code hanging then because that's work that we did that won't be productive. Uh, and the other thing is, if we're looking at float that's not a matter of days, but a matter of months, do we want to start some software and then put it on the shelf for two months? You know, requirements could change during that time. So there's a good argument for doing it as early as we can to find out that risk and mitigate that risk. But there's also a good argument to be made to do the software just in time or whatever we're producing. Uh, do it just in time so that we can account for any changes that, changes that might have occurred. And we could account for canceling the project and having uh, less work that we're going to throw away. So uh, early start and late start date, uh, important thing to look for here, just in summary, we need a project plan that looks like this, where we have two tasks or more that are effectively getting coalesced on a future task, which in this case is B. Uh, and we're assuming that this is running parallel to the critical path, that this is not the critical path itself. And the free float is the length of time of the shortest path. Uh, actually, well, let me say that a different way. 
it's effectively the length of time of a longer path minus the length of time of the shortest path because the longer path is what sets this early start date and the shorter path is the path that has free float. I hope that's understandable. Uh, I explain it as well as I can, but uh, no matter how many times I explain it, it is still a bit of a confusing concept, but you know what? That's the nice thing about video is you can always go back and replay this and, and, and uh, hopefully it will make more sense. And if it doesn't, by all means, contact me, let me know, and let's talk it through. Thank you.